maybe they have us muted right now. sound should be on. I have nothing else coming through my laptop, so I don't understand this. Got a good picture. He's got us muted. They were talking. Yeah, I know. I can't. But the sound's not coming out on my computer. That's weird. Weird.
had something with the pine.
and welcome to the St. James live Christmas service from the chapel. I'm welcoming you here from a uh, Zoom from uh, across the country and perhaps around the world. I'm welcoming you here from Facebook Live. And it brings to mind all of the Christians through all of the years who have celebrated this holy day no matter what. We think about the Christians in the catacombs being persecuted by Rome, celebrating Christmas as well as they could, gathered together in small groups. We think of Christians through 500 years of the Dark Ages, celebrating Christmas as best as they could through plagues and through wars. And so here we find ourselves today, not celebrating as four in a chapel or even 400 on the internet, but celebrating as 4 million, 400 million, even 4 billion people today around this whole world. As we gather together our voices in song, there may be a pandemic, but that doesn't stop the people of God from lifting their voices in praise and giving thanks to the God who is so good. And so we gather here together, and I hope that you'll stay with us. We've got a sprinkling of Christmas carols throughout the service, usually just one or two verses, the ones that you know. We also have a reading and a sermon and Holy Communion. We pray that wherever you are today, you know that you are not alone. Because right now, this very moment, we are gathered together as one heart and one spirit, God's people, celebrating the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Angels, we have heard on high. Yeah. 
Lord be with you. Well, I need my congregation to be a little louder than that. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray the collect of the day. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. And now you may be seated wherever you are for our first lesson. A reading from Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm, he has won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of all. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and all peoples with equity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O come, all ye faithful. As we think on the happenings of this holy day 2,000 years ago, we might find, looking back, that it's full of unlikely characters who make unlikely choices. God must have chosen well, because had he chosen anyone else to be a part of this extraordinary happening, what God had intended might have been stopped by human failure unlikely characters making unlikely choices. 
It had been almost 500 years since anyone had heard the voice of God, the words of the prophets. 500 years when an angel came to speak, not to Mary first, but to Zechariah. Zechariah was the high priest that year, and he was serving in the temple. And as he was serving in the temple, an angel came to Zechariah and told him that his wife was going to bear a son, and he was to name him John. And he would go ahead of the Messiah to prepare the way. Zechariah didn't believe it. And of course he didn't believe it. It didn't make sense. 500 years God had been quiet. Rome had the, the people of Israel and Judea in his grip. Zechariah resisted the angel and he was struck dumb. And for nine months, couldn't say a word. Elizabeth, his wife, did conceive a child, even though she was in her old age. And the scriptures don't tell us what her response to that idea, that happening was for her, but she seems to have accepted it in her heart. It was six months later, before even John was born, that an angel came again to Mary, to a young maiden, in an unlikely town of, of Nazareth, perhaps just a couple of hundred people, a small hill town up in the Galilee, to what was almost certainly a young woman, maybe 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. And the angel came to Mary. She was old enough to know, of course, how children are born. The angel came to her and told her that she was going to conceive and bear a child in her womb. And that she would be conceiving by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that the Most High would overshadow her so that the child born within her would be holy. Now, I don't know what your response would be if someone came and told you they were an angel and told you that you were going to have a child in your womb, though you'd been with no man. Everything in your mind would resist it. You'd be in the same place as Zechariah, most likely, not willing to believe. Mary, though an unlikely person, made an unlikely choice, which is that even though everything was stacked against it being true, Mary opened her heart and believed. She opened her heart and trusted. She said, let it be done to me according to your word, for I am the handmaid of God. I am the handmaid of God. And it was because of that movement of her heart, that movement of her faith, that what God had promised her came to be. And Mary became large with child, just in time for Joseph, as he was preparing to, to finish their marriage ceremonies, to see that the woman he had been betrothed to was large with child. And again, Everything was stacked against Joseph accepting this to be true, and in fact, he didn't, because it didn't make sense. Mary telling him, I mean, her parents telling Joseph that this was a child from the Holy Spirit. Yeah, right. I'm not sure I can go that far. And Joseph decided he would dismiss her, dismiss her quietly, knowing, of course, that if he didn't dismiss her quietly, Mary could be stoned in the streets, and he didn't want that, of course. It took an angel coming to Joseph in a dream to tell him that he was stuck too much in his head and that Joseph had to think with his heart. In a sense, he had to take a lesson from Mary, who had opened her heart, even despite this, the odds stacked against it and believed. Joseph had to do the same thing. So an angel had to come to him and say, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is holy and is from God. Even then, Joseph had every opportunity to resist the word that had been spoken to him. 
But the angel did something for him, and it opened a door that Joseph decided to go through. And that was that Joseph decided he would open his heart and believe with faith, even though it didn't make sense, even though it was hard to understand. In a sense, although we don't have the words in the scriptures, Joseph said the whole thing with his life and with his choice. Behold, I am the servant of God. Let it be done according to your word. And when Joseph woke up, he went to Mary, and he took her to be his wife, promising to have no marital relations until this special child had been born. It wasn't so long afterwards, perhaps another three months, Mary was just getting started with her pregnancy, that Elizabeth, who we began the service with, the sermon with, Elizabeth finally gave birth to her child. Zechariah's mouth had been shut for nine months because of his disbelief. And Mary gave birth to the child, and she said, he should be named John. And everybody around her said, John? This doesn't make sense. There's nobody in your family named John. Surely he should be called Zechariah, or maybe even the name of your father, or one of your uncles. And finally, Zechariah found it in him. It took him nine months, remember, to take and move himself from living in his head in this world of, of disbelief to move himself into his heart. And as he heard his wife arguing, being argued with by everyone else in the household, Zechariah burst out a statement of faith. His name is John. And by those three words, accepted everything that the angel had told him nine months earlier. Believed it in his heart, stepped in with both feet, came to the side of his wife, having her back. And indeed, the infant was named John, who would become the Baptist. When John was six months old, Mary had been nine months pregnant now. And wouldn't you know it, but Emperor Augustus decided it was time for a census. Why was it time for a census? Because everybody wanted more taxes. Everybody knows that you can't tax the people that you don't exist, that you're not aware of. So he said, everybody, let's have a big census. We'll count everybody, and then we'll know that the coffers are as full as they should be. Everyone, go back to the, to the, the town from which your family is descended. And Joseph had to come to Mary. Perhaps Mary heard first and came to Joseph, and they had to discuss how was she going to get nine months pregnant all the way to Bethlehem a journey of over a hundred miles through rocky terrain, over hills, across water, through the ruckus city of Jerusalem. When my wife Libby was pregnant, it was hard enough to get to Wyandotte. <laughs> Have you ever been pregnant and had to go over those terrible train tracks when you go over the Bay Bridge? Are you kidding me? My poor wife was shaking all over the place and on the way home, she had sutures. It was hard enough to get that far. Mary had to go a hundred miles. And maybe they might have asked for some kind of special dispensation. Probably wouldn't have gotten it. They might have asked. But Joseph and Mary had learned their lesson. Even though it didn't make sense to go that far, there was nothing about it that seemed likely to go well. The two of them believed. What they did was they made a decision with their heart they said, God has put this in front of us. If God has placed this in our path, then nothing can stop us from making it all the way. He's taken us this far. Let's believe him and trust him, and let's go the rest of the way in faith. And so they journeyed out, and they made it all the way. They come into Bethlehem, and Mary's ready to give birth to her child, probably because of the train tracks or whatever it was for her day. And Joseph and Mary are looking for a place for her to stay. And everywhere is full. Everywhere is full. This is not going to go well. But they trusted. The scripture tells us there was no room in the inn. 
And some years back, I, somebody put a National Geographic on the, uh, on the desk of, the, of my uh, office, on the top of my office desk. This happens sometimes. There's something about Jesus. I'm going to get a National Geographic sitting on my desk in front of the computer. And there it was. And it was first century houses. Now, I don't know if this was the way that it was, but they had, a, 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 an archaeologist had unearthed a house from the first century, and what they found was this. It was a two-level house. There was a first floor, and then immediately above it, almost like a bunk, was a second level. And what they found were that the animals, the animals stayed on the ground level because they have a hard time with stairs. So the animals would come in through the door. You could close it up. Now, this is not if you have a flock of 4,000 sheep, but that's a different thing. Then you're a shepherd. This is you've got a couple of chickens. You've got a goat. You've got maybe a cow. You bring them all inside. You close the door. Nobody's going to steal them. There's places hollowed away on the ground, into maybe into the stone or the earth where you might put the food and it would sort of hold the water and the stuff and they would come and eat from it. And the family sleeps above. Why does the family sleep above? Because the heat from the animals would rise? Because you can sleep above and you only have to make those same four walls? You can sleep above and you don't have to worry about stepping in anything from the animals? And even the Greek word used for in, it turns out is not like an old fashioned in from the Middle Ages. It's the idea of one of these second stories that's large enough so that if people, you need to have guests, people come in, then there's room up there where you sleep for the other people to come and stay. And this comes to my mind as I think about Mary and Joseph coming and going from house to house, trying to find a place where they could stay. And everywhere they went, everybody said, this whole top story is full. There's too many people up here. There's people against the walls and people on top of people. There's no room on the second level. But there is room down below if you're willing to stay in the first floor. And so perhaps it was a situation like this where Mary and Joseph came in and had to stay on the ground level. A humble beginning for that little baby Jesus. And when he was born, surrounded by those animals, surrounded by the, the refuse of the world, and certainly the world had grown dark and grown bad in many ways, Mary must have swiped away one of these divots into the ground, perhaps she did, and wrapped her baby in strips of cloth. I imagine it might have been her own dress or maybe a blanket that they had. They didn't bring baby clothes. They wrapped him in the bands of cloth laid him in that place. You know how the story goes where the angels appear to the shepherds and the star appears to the magi in the east. And again, the shepherds had no reason to believe that, this, that, 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 that what they were hearing or seeing was real, but they moved with their heart and went to see. The Magi had no reason to believe that stars were going to predict the birth of a king, except that they believed in their hearts that it was so. And so they came very, very far, all the way to Bethlehem as well. And so we have this cast of unlikely characters making unlikely choices. In every single case, if they had been working with their minds and thinking what was likely in the world, they would have turned away. They would have gone the other way. They would have blown it off as unreal or unlikely, but time and time again, they believe. Making the movement with their hearts to trust, to open, and to receive, and to step forward in faith. Of all the many ways that this story speaks to us about the salvation of the world, it speaks to us especially in this way. That the story is passed on to us. And we are the much larger cast of unlikely characters who are still in this very day hearing the word of God and hearing the promise of God who's calling us into something better, who has promised us something real 
who has promised to take us through these difficult times and bring us into a brighter and more beautiful world where everyone is, is respected and honored, where there is no poor and there are no weak, where there are no people on the fringes, but we have become one body, one nation, one people with one spirit. And God is calling us forward in faith into that world and hoping that we will believe. That we'll take a lesson from Mary and Joseph and Zechariah and Elizabeth and shepherds and magi and like them, move with our hearts and embrace the promise in faith. And if you need an image to take with you of this, well, I bring you back to that inn just one more time. I invite you to think of yourself as that inn. And here is the upper level and here is the lower level. Here is the place that is so full. Our minds are so full with so many voices and so many claims of what is true and what's unlikely and what we need to do and what our needs are and what our fears are. And our ends are full. And God is calling us to something new and something real. And as long as we're staying here, there's no room to receive that word. But my friends, Jesus wasn't born here. Jesus was born here. He wasn't born in the upper level. He was born down below. And if you and I will take a lesson from that end and choose to live with our hearts, choose to stay in that lower place, and open the doors wide. Well, there is no telling the blessings that are in store for us, for people who live for the promise and trust that God is good. Don't worry about the pandemic, it will pass. Don't worry about your loneliness, we will hug again. Open the doors of your hearts, my friends, and let's live the coming year in faith and find out all that God has in store for those who live with their hearts wide open in love. Amen. We continue with our prayers. Let us pray, saying, God of hope and promise, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as Mary and Joseph served you with willing hearts, so teach us also how to serve. God of hope and promise, hear, hear our prayer. As your Son came to lead and guide all nations, so let all peoples find unity and salvation in Christ. God of hope and promise. Hear our prayer. As your star guided the Magi and your angels guided the shepherds, so guide us by your light, God of hope and promise. Hear our prayer. As you heal our ancient wounds through your Holy Spirit, send healing to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, God of hope and promise. Hear our prayer. As we greet with joyful hearts the Christ child, so help us honor and provide for all children, God of hope and promise. Hear our prayer. As the events of the first Christmas were for us all, so help us all to hear your voice and do your will to the glory of your name, God of hope and promise. Hear our prayer. As the coming of Jesus Christ opened heaven to earth, so open your kingdom to all who we love but see no longer. Grant them your peace. God of hope and promise. Hear our word. Hasten, O oh Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son and his coming in glorious majesty, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, we've come to the, the time of peace. And so I wish you all a Merry Christmas. I wish you all all the peace of the world, the peace of the Lord.
be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. I'm going to try Zoom. If I can figure it out to give you a second and unmute everybody, let's see if I can do it. I think I sent you a request. You can unmute yourself if you want to say hi to each other. Hi. 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 I Penny, I'm on Zoom at church. Hi, Callie. Hi there. No, it isn't. No. Oh, she's probably with her. I don't know. That was cool. Hi, Mary Jo. Hi. Hi, Mary Jo. Hi, everyone. want to come up. We're going to do the song beginning if you're an Episcopalian. Sing loud so everyone else can hear. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May he lift up your hearts. Give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is from the mind to give you thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is, Christ is risen. Christ, is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. And if you didn't get it, we'll do it again. Christ has died. Christ is, Christ risen. is risen. Christ will Christ come, will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by the power of your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints, to the joy of your eternal kingdom. 
all this we ask, this we ask through your Son, your son Jesus, Christ. Jesus Christ, by him, him and with him, and with him, him, in him, in the unity, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Spirit. all honor and glory, and glory is yours, is your almighty Father, Father, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. There, Therefore, let us, let us keep the peace. Keep the peace. All right. All right. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith. With thanks. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. You can receive this in your heart. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Facebook, you can receive this in your heart. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. 
Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Three verses of Silent Night, our candlelight vigil. This is our threefold Christmas blessing, so there's four amens. Mm -hmm. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy, and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, join heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. If you've got a little joy in your heart, we have one last gift. Joy to oh. the Thank <laughs> you.
friends in Christ, this is the celebration of the birth of our Savior. Go in peace to love and serve the world. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Go forth in peace. Go forth in joy. Go forth in love to love and serve the Lord. Go forth in praise. Go forth with our blessings. May you have a wonderful Christmas season and an amazing new year.